Hello, welcome back to the Spectrasonics Omnisphere tutorial series. Still struggling to find an easy way to say that. Today we're having a look at frequency modulation, one of the six processing options available to, to both oscillators. And we access it by pressing the little FM grayed out FM symbol down here. And that gets us into the oscillator zoom page and takes us immediately to the frequency modulation option. This is actually the same zoom page for all of these features we're going to have a look at. It's just that whichever one you click on takes you by default to that sub page. So here we have frequency modulation. I've initialized the sound. We've got our simple um, sawtooth sound. And there it is. Now what frequency modulation does is uses yet another one of Omnisphere's hidden oscillators. It has four dedicated oscillators for us to listen to, A, B, C, and D, but it also uses hidden oscillators behind the scenes for various of its um, processing options, and frequency modulation is one of those. Because we have this thing called a modulator. This is an oscillator completely independent from all of the other ones that we've talked about so far. And what this is going to do is apply modulation to the host sound this square saw bright sound uh, modulation to its pitch. So what I'm going to do is this is the default view that you get with both of these controls set to mid and set to boost by default. I'm going to actually override all of that. That's what I want it to look like. So as things stand at the moment, there's going to be no difference between played sound without modulation and with modulation. It sounds exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do is introduce a little bit of depth, a little bit of frequency, and then let's see what we've got now. Now the first thing to note is that the pitch is oscillating really pretty quickly. I've hardly touched the frequency slider and it's already jiggling backwards and forwards really quite quickly. At its absolute slowest speed, we just about get into what's called LFO territory, where the the uh, the modulation that's being applied to the pitch is slow enough for us to really take note of. So this entire frequency range is really pretty fast. You don't really have the opportunity to act as a vibrato engine, which you do in some other frequency modulation engines, just a point to note. So the more that I increase the depth slider, that pitch variance is going to increase. So that's the amount of modulation that's being applied. This shape over here is telling us what form that modulation is going to take. So if I switch this to a triangle instead, you get a linear variation over time rather than the sine wave constantly changing one. And if we have a saw, we're going to get a ramp effect. But those are just the simple shapes. We've got access to every single wavetable in the synthesizer. So we can apply any one of the wavetable shapes to it, and it'll do that to the pitch of the primary sound. Frequency obviously determines how fast the modulation takes place. And can you see these little lines? You're going to want to use those quite regularly because that's where you get the most musical options for your frequency modulation. I'm going to take us back to a simple sine wave. Keep everything nice and simple. And I'll start increasing the, uh, the frequency rate and you'll, you'll hear what I mean. So in no time at all, it's no longer possible to identify individual modulations. As it approaches this little line, it seems to kind of fall in sync. Now can you see, I can't quite get that slider exactly on the line. The line actually represents 0.25. What I can do is right click, enter parameter value. So if you want an absolutely accurate way of getting to each one of these waypoints, 
then you can always um, type it in manually. So if I want to go halfway, I mean, we know we can control click, but I can also type 0.5 and it takes me straight there. And the difference between 0.5 and 0.56 is, you know, reasonably significant. At each one of these waypoints, get something that's fairly musical because the rate at which the modulator is varying the pitch of the sound is sympathetic with the underlying pitch. Our ears love natural multiples. Octaves are the purest and that's two to one. And then the perfect fifth is the next purest sound at three to two. And so our brains absolutely love natural, smooth, nice, round numbers. And that's what you get with these little lines. So don't take them for granted. They do mean something. But that's not, not to say that you can't stick the slider right in the middle of that range and it's an entirely different affair altogether. The boost button down below does exactly what it says. It makes the change more dramatic. So if I press it, I'll just get this back to 0.5 again. Play a three note chord and then boost it. So let's try to catch just what the boost is doing there by bringing these values down to a more manageable level. Some pretty nasty stuff going on. So that's with the boost on and with the boost off. So the range of modulation is dramatically increased. Now by default, the modulator tracks with every key that you press but we can disable that. So I'm just gonna set it slightly above zero and play a low note. And then a high note, much faster. Every octave that I come down. Aggressively slows down because the modulation is tracking with the pitch of the key. Turn tracking off. Same speed everywhere. Then we've got complete control over the modulator's wave shape using all of the same functionality that we had in the primary screen shape, symmetry, hard sync, shape, symmetry, sync. So this is now the shape of the modulator that I'm changing see the graphic morphing through the wavetable. Here's symmetry. Although we've got a sine wave here, I'll need to switch to a different wave. The sine wave is perfectly symmetrical, so that's not going to work. There we go. And similarly with sync. So this is kind of funny. This is a hidden modulator oscillator being modulated by a hidden sync oscillator. That, that, that's all very well and good from a theory point of view, but we've been dealing with very dry waves and it sounds a bit harsh. So I thought what it would be quite nice to do is to find a sound that really Uses, uses FM a little bit better. So this um, preset here, there's tons of other stuff going on, FX and all sorts of things. But all we're really interested in is going down to a single layer. Turn the frequency modulation off. This is the native sound of the preset. Turn FM on. And now that we've got this kind of dramatic sound that's not quite as hideous as a sawtooth. It's not playing yet. Can you see it's actually set to exactly 0.25? You'll see this a lot with presets. They set the frequency modulation exactly on these lines. 
uh, that's a, a top tip, I think. That's really cool. And the sound takes off and disappears. Frequency modulation is a pretty big sound pit. Um, lots of fun to be had with this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. You'll catch me for the next episode. Hope to see you then.